Well, good morning from day 105. Thought I would check in with you and sort of let you know how our day is going. Uh, obviously, we are indoors. Uh, a whole lot of things conspired against us. We had planned to uh, slack pack about 17 miles today and just a whole wide variety of logistics issues came up this weekend and it ended up the best thing for us to do was to stay indoors today because it, I mean, it is raining a little bit, not a lot, but some. Um, so we aren't going to go out on the trail with wet feet immediately. Uh, we're just going to hang today. We still have the rental car. That's part of the logistics is trying to get that returned and finding uh, a way to drive into Harrisburg. So we got that worked out and uh, we're blessed with that. Uh, we'll take it back tomorrow afternoon. We've got a ride to the trail tomorrow. We'll be coming back here tomorrow night for one last night, and then we're going to get the heck out of Dodge and move our way northwards. And uh, so today's video, not going to be a lot of hiking, but I thought it would be a good time to show you what's in my pack at the halfway point. Uh, we've got uh, both of us quite a few new gear options uh, or items in our bags, and I thought I would take a little bit of time today and sort of show you what we're carrying up the trail right now uh, at our halfway point here, uh, a little north of uh, Duncannon, uh, Pennsylvania. Well, continuing with my halfway gear list, um, I don't know if you can tell at a glance, but my clothing gear has really been pared down some for warmer weather, and I'm kind of glad of that. So I'll just kind of tell you a little bit about some of the things that I've got. Um, I'm still carrying two buffs uh, to keep sun off my neck and for a sweatband. This one does a really good job of just around my around my forehead and ears and sweatband kind of a thing. Uh, I've got three pair of socks. I've got uh, two of them are smart wool, one's darn tough, and I've kept my compression socks. Uh, thankfully, knock wood, I've had no issues uh, in the recent days uh, with my shin splints, but I've kept those in my gear just to uh, just to have in case something should come up. Okay, so moving on around here. Um, I've got a uh, dry weave shirt over here and a pair of uh, polyester dry weave short pants. That's my town clothes that I typically wear when we get to uh, to camp or into town or what have you. I try to keep these as clean as possible. I you know, shift into those as soon as I get to the campsite. And um, you know, when we do laundry, I'll get down to my rain gear and I'll wash those too. But those always stay dry. Those are my you know, get to camp kind of a things. Um, and then over here, we've still got a couple of pair of underwear. This is a, a little towel that I use to dry the inside of my tent. Now that we're into warmer weather, uh, condensation in my tent is a very real thing. So I've had to deal with that. Um, just as a precaution, I'm still carrying some, uh, smart wool. Actually, I think these are REI wool, uh, base layer top and bottom. The top may be smart wool. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. And then a beanie in case the, the weather gets cold at night. And, you know, if you follow anybody's videos, you know that conventional trail wisdom is you never, ever send your puffy home. So even though I've not had this out of its stuff sack until uh, just the last few days, and I've, I've taken it out just to let it loft up and, and not be compressed, I've still got my down puffy jacket from Mountain Hardware. It's the Ghost Whisperer. And then on a day-to-day -day basis, when I get kind of cool, uh, I've been using my Mountain Hardware fleece, which is just absolutely one of my favorite pieces of gear. I really, really should send that home because I don't need it often, and I still have the puffy jacket, but it is just such a comfortable piece of gear. I'm having a hard time letting that one go. So here's my midway clothing. Oh, and also I have hiking clothing. I think I showed you a few days ago um, when we were at REI, I purchased a sun hoodie uh, just to give me a little bit of protection on my arms and my neck. Uh, so I'm actually wearing that now. And then I have another pair of pants just like these, but a smaller size that um, I use for uh, hiking in. So that's my clothing at the midway point. Well, this is the second segment of my halftime gear video. Uh, not a lot has changed here. Uh, and I didn't blow everything up or what have you. I just thought I'd lay things out and sort of show you what my sleep system looks like. So over here to the far right, this is the Gossamer Gear Thin Light Pad. And I started with that. Um, it doesn't really provide a whole lot of padding, but what it is good for is it is a protective layer between my sleeping pad and the shelter floor or the tent floor or whatever. And if in my tent, or if I'm in my tent, it will keep my pad from sliding back and forth on the uh, bottom of the tent. You know, the bottom is a material called Dyneema, which is just a very slippery, uh, high strength uh, fabric. 
but it's slick, so the pad would actually slide around on the floor. I would slide to the bottom of the tent if I happened to be just a little bit off level. So this Gossamer gear pad helps my sleeping pad to keep from slipping around, and it serves as a protective layer when we're in shelters. Okay, then the next thing up, the gray piece here, uh, this gray thing, that is the uh, sleeping pad that I use. Um, it is the uh, Neo Air X Therm by Thermarest. It blows up to about three inches thick, and truthfully, it is it is a very, very comfortable pad. In the wintertime, it has a lot of warmth to it. Uh, it has an R value of about seven. Not that I need that right now, but I'm not gonna spend another 150 or $200 on a new sleeping pad when that one works just fine. Uh, on top of that, I've got a Trekology pillow. Trekology pillows are available online, and if you're a beginner backpacker or even an experienced backpacker, I'll be truthful, I have found no other backpack pillow that is as comfortable and as inexpensive as the Trekology pillow. Uh, it, uh, it actually has a strap around the back side of it that I can attach it to the top of my sleeping pad when it's blown up, and that keeps it from moving around during the night. I actually have two of those. I, I use one to uh, put my head on, and then the second one I use it to uh, hold because I'm a side sleeper. Uh, next up is, and this is an odd thing, this is the orange piece here that you're seeing is the Cedar Summit Reactor Extreme sleeping bag liner, or in this case, quilt liner. Um, it is uh, kind of, it's basically a flannel liner. It is purported to add up to 25 degrees to your sleep system. I'm not sure I believe 25, I might, I might believe 10 or 15. But, uh, you know, even though it's, it's warm right now, what I like about this is it is more cotton-like. Uh, in fact, it probably has a little cotton in it. I'm honestly not sure what it's made of. But if I get to perspiring at night, it will absorb some of that sweat. And then I can toss that in the wash a lot more easily than I can a bag. And then the final piece right here, and this is a new piece. Everything else I've had in my pack all the way along. Um, this is the Big Agnes Kings Canyon UL quilt. It's a summer weight quilt. Uh, when I bought it, the guy told me it had a 40 degree temperature rating. I've never actually seen that anywhere uh, on print material that it's 40 degrees. But... It is certainly a summer weight quilt, and between using the liner and the quilt, I've stayed warm almost every night since I've had it. Uh, the only night that I was a little cool, I pulled my toboggan on or my beanie if you're from the north. Uh, and I still have my base layers and my fleece or my puffy that I could pull on if I were cold and needed something more. So this is my halfway point sleep system. Uh, I've got the Gossamer Gear Thin Light Pad, Neo Air X Therm, Trekology Pillow, Cedar Summit Reactor Extreme Liner, and then the Big Agnes Copper uh, Kings Canyon quilt. If you go to look for the Kings Canyon, they have done a redesign on it. It is no longer yellow, but I think it's essentially the same quilt with maybe a few new modifications. Uh, one of those things is it does have some Velcro patches on the back so that you can uh, pin it closed if you need to. Well, here's a few things that haven't changed as well. Uh, still have the same cook system. Uh, I've got the, um, oh, what's the name of this? GSI Outdoors Cup, which is, that's a stellar thing. That's what I do all of my cooking and eating out of, coffee in the morning, uh, ramen at night. Uh, over here, I've got my titanium pot. Uh, inside is another fuel canister and my Solo stove or Soto stove. And then I've got an extra fuel canister. Um, I did purchase a new sit pad. This is like a, just an accordion um, sit pad. It's about 12 by 18 inches. And when you get to a campsite that you want to sit on a bench or a log or a rock or wherever that you are, you can kind of spread that out and that'll keep you dry from moisture and that sort of thing and give you a little bit of padding. And honestly, what I've been using it for is um, I've had it in my, in my lower back uh, to give me a little bit more girth around so that my pack will cinch down. The electronics kit hasn't changed uh, really at all since we started, but I thought I would just give you another overview of the kinds of things I'm carrying. Um, <clears throat> so starting over here on the left, um, I've had uh, to do my editing on. Yes, that's a luxury item. It weighs over two pounds, but it is just so much easier for me to edit with Final Cut Pro on the iPad. So I've maintained that. Uh, up here to the top left, uh, oops, there's my finger. This is the Flextail pump for my sleeping pad. Yes, I could use my stuff sack. Uh, the stuff sack weighs an ounce. This weighs two ounces. Um, so I don't really worry about the extra weight with that. Uh, I can still use the stuff sack if this thing uh, loses charge, but 
it is so, so much easier. Uh, then continuing on here, I've got charging cables here for all my devices. Um, you know, I've got a, a watch cable, USB-C, US, uh, lightning, lightning, um, and those keep my devices charged. Uh, to that end over here, I've got a 20,000 milliamp hour anchor uh, charging brick. Um, so far that has proved sufficient on the trail. I've toyed with the idea of buying a second one, a 10,000, but just don't want to add the weight. And honestly, this will get me about four days or so and Hawkeye's carrying two of those, so if, if worse comes to worse, we can do some sharing on the one that he has. Uh, coming in from the top up here, uh, there's my headlamp. It's a Black Diamond Storm, I believe it is, or Spot. I don't remember now which. Uh, I've got my AirPods over here. Uh, uh, oops, there we go. Use those every day. Love them. And then here's just a Cedar Summit 2-liter uh, dry bag that I use to keep all my electronics in. All right, so I've got everything packed up in my bag. Uh, except for my Crocs. My Crocs usually hang right here. Uh, so I just wanted to sort of go through and show you the kinds of things that I've got here and where they live. Um, everything is about knowing where stuff is. So up here in the very, very top part of the brain, um, I've got a bandana and a few pens and pencils and some pieces of rope that I don't use very often. So that's kind of out of the way. In the, uh, in the way top, and I'll shift this around here a little bit. Um, I've got my towel that I'll use to dry out my tent in the morning. And then I've got uh, toilet paper and an ace bandage. I've got my trowel for digging cat holes, my hand sanitizer, and that sort of thing. So stuff that I need really quick and easy access to goes right there in the brain. And also I try to keep that fairly lightweight because in a backpack you want all the weight as, po as much as possible to be to the center of your back and as low as possible. So that's opening up the brain. <clears throat> now let's look in the rest of the pack. So we'll pop these off. Well, while I'm here, just outside in this mesh, I've got rain jacket. Uh, this is a new rain jacket that I bought in Damascus. So far, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, it is an outdoor research. I don't remember exactly the model name of it. Um, <clears throat> I have a couple of CNOC bladders. Those are the dirty bladders that I use to filter water. Uh, I have my water filter right here. And um, down in here somewhere, I have my rain pants. And I've got an additional pack cover in here. This pack actually comes with a rain cover. Uh, haven't tried it to know that it fits yet, but I know the old one did, so I didn't send that home yet. So that's all the stuff that I need quick access to in the, uh, in the very outside of the bag. So popping things open. There we go. All right. At the very, very top of the bag, I have my fleece uh, jacket. Uh, I mentioned that, that uh, this is one of my favorite pieces of gear. Sometimes it lives up here. Sometimes I kind of pin it right here and just let it drape. But if I can get it in the bag, I'm going to do that. Um, I've got my pot and my cup also up here. And I've got my two sit pads, uh, fairly lightweight. Thankfully, with this new bag, the hip belt fits me well. So I no longer need to put one of those in my sacrum. So I'll use those and leave those in the pack to sit on. Uh, here's my Gossamer Gear Thin Light Pad. And then so far as the weight stu uh, stuff goes, uh, goes along here, I usually keep my food bag in the very top. Uh, that way it's accessible. I can get to it very quickly. And uh, as I work my way down, I pack the bag the same way every time. Uh, I've got my electronics kit stuff right here. And then over here, I've got my clothes bag. Digging on down. Um, I've got my puppy jacket and I'm going to have to soon have to have a, uh, a new bag for it because I was just re-stuffing it and I just ripped the top completely off. So I'll order one of those in a little bit. So in the same spot as that, I have my sleep bag or my uh, sleeping quilt that I showed you. <clears throat> my iPad tucks in down there to be protected and to be waterproof. have my medicine kit and uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, soap, ds 4 and that sort of thing. I'd be broken lives there. And then finally down here in the way bottom, I'm going to pull out my liner and my sleeping pad. So that's how everything goes in the bag. Other things that I have in here, uh, I have a, a bladder right here. It's a, a Osprey Hydraulics 3 liter bladder and it has a hose that goes out the top right here. and <clears throat> I have quick and ready access to water, except I've got it knotted up behind. You know what a water bottle looks like. So those are the things that I've got in my pack, fully packed. Is it lighter than it was when I started? Yes, because of some of the summer weight gear, 
I'm beginning to dial in some of my foodstuffs. Uh, I've sent some of the heavier items home. Do I still have some work to go? Yes, I probably do, but right now I'm comfortable with it. And to have a pack that actually fits properly and well, and this one does right now, um, I'll be blessed to go up the trail. So that's what I've got so far as gear at the midway point here on the Appalachian Trail. Well, thanks for joining us on day 105. Uh, hopefully today's video has been informative to you. Uh, I wasn't really sure <clears throat> what to do with another zero day, but I, I have made some substantial gear changes in my kit. So I thought I would share that with you and just sort of let you know what we're, or what at least what I'm proceeding up the trail with uh, is. Uh, Gavin's gear, a lot the same. The big change he's made is he's got the same quilt that I have. Uh, still wearing the same pack. Everything else is about the same. Um, so anyway, we're going to be moving forward tomorrow. We're going to go back to where we both left off and we'll be slack packing about 17 and a half miles tomorrow, uh, to a place about five miles from uh, where we are right now. We'll come back one more time and thank you again, Sharon and Dale for all of your, uh, hospitality. Uh, I feel like we've been here forever and, and should long have, uh, long ago have outstayed our welcome, but we, uh, we have been made to feel welcome and we appreciate it. And thank you guys so much. So join us tomorrow morning. We'll be back on the trail tomorrow and we'll hope to, hope to have some views and show you downtown Duncannon when we come through it. Uh, I know we'll have some look, uh, some views down over the river tomorrow. So join us for that and we'll see you then.